turn your cell phones off or to silent. Don't text. Every time you do, you will hear it in our microphones. We are asking you politely, turn them off. Live for two hours dangerously without your cell phones, please. We are dedicating tonight's show to Justin Knapp, one of our students, passed away this past year. Justin was in four musicals along with four other shows. We are dedicating this entire production to him. You will notice out in the lobby, they are selling, I believe, 50 50 raffles for a scholarship. They will be out there at the beginning of intermission, so you can purchase them again, and we will announce the winner prior to the beginning of the second act. We do not mind if you take pictures, I want you to sit back and enjoy, and always remember, the sun will come out tomorrow. It is my pleasure to present 2014 production of A. Bet 
much as she sews Maybe she's made me a closet of clothes Maybe they're straight, as straight as a line Don't really care as long as they're mine So maybe now this prayer's the last one of its kind Won't you please come get your bed?
Good morning, Miss Hannigan. Well, I love you, Miss Hannigan. 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 You! What are you doing in there? Nothing. Get her out of there. Get her out. You. Your days are numbered. All right. Breakfast. Hot mush? No. You don't get hot mush this morning. Yay! You get cold mush. Yay! And after your mush, You'll go to your sewing machines. There's an order of dresses you'll finish today if you have to work straight through to midnight. Yes, Miss Hannigan. Laundry, laundry man. Move it. Morning, Morning bundles. Morning, kids. Clean sheets once a month, whether you need them or not. Morning.
seen her run around the neighborhood. I think she's stray. Stray? Oh no, officer. She, she's my dog. Your dog, huh? All right. So what's her name? Her name is... Sandy. Come on, that's it. I call her Sandy. You see, because of her nice Sandy color. Sandy color. All right. Let's see your answer to her name, then. Answer? You mean when I call her? Right. When you call her by her name, Sandy. Well, you see, officer, I just got it. Just buzz my answer. Call her. Okay. Here. Here's Sandy. Here's Sandy. Sandy. Good Sandy. Good old Sandy. All right. Maybe she is your dog. But next time you have her out, I want to see her on a leash and with a license. Or we'll take her to the pound and put her to sleep. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I understand. On a leaf and with a light. All right. Now run along with you before you catch your death of cold. Oh, I don't mind the weather. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and cold. <laughs> Get out of here, you lousies. Hey, uh, Sophie, this job ready yet? Patience, patience. Make way for John D. Rockefeller. How'd it go today, Alice? Seven million people in New York and you can't tell one lousy apple. Excuse me, though. Excuse me. Did anyone here leave a bed-headed kid at an orphanage 11 years ago? <laughs> no. Not me, kid. Ladies and gents, dinner is served. Soup is on. Hey kid, what are you doing out alone this time of night? I'm looking for my mom and dad. They're lost. Lost? How long have you been looking for them? Eleven years. Now that's lost. <laughs> <laughs> hey kid, it's time to give up. No, I'm gonna find them. Hey, there's something I haven't heard since 1928. What? Optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Optimism? What do we got to be optimistic about? Look at us. Life's a nightmare. Well, you gotta have a dream. Traffic rattling overhead all night? To wake you from your nightmare. Empty pockets? At least you got pockets. Freezing fingers? Lucky you got them empty pockets. Newspapers for blankets? You can read in bed. Kid, you should be a politician. You should have run against Roosevelt. Hey, listen to this. Former President Herbert Hoover said today in an interview, though I am no way personally responsible for the stock market crash in 1929, uh, I have the deepest sympathy for the millions that are now ragged, hungry, and homeless. Working. Hungry! Homeless! Blue. They offered us 
What? There's hot cocoa and ginger snaps for you in the recreation room. What recreation room? Oh, <laughs> shoo, shoo, shoo. No. Thank you so much, officer. Cut her down by one of them Hoovervilles at the docks. She had a mangy muffin too, but she got that. Aw, poor pumpkin out in the freezing cold with just that thin sweater. I hope you didn't catch influenza. Thanks so much, officer. All in the line of duty. And you, I don't ever want to hear that you run away from this nice lady again. She's not. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, officer. And the next time you walk out these doors, it'll be 1953. Well, are you glad to be back? Huh? Yes, Miss Hannigan. Liar! What's the one thing I always taught you? Never tell a lie. Well, what's the one thing I always taught you? Never tell a lie, Miss Hannigan. For what you've done, I could get fired. Have the Board of Orphans stick their nose in here? Well, you'll pay for it. I promise. Stay. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm Grace Farrell. So? And the New York Board of Orphans suggested. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it. I can explain everything. It wasn't my fault. It was Annie, you see. Miss Hannigan, I. And I'm sure I should have called Mr. Donatelli and to the police. Miss Hannigan, I... I'm sorry, but I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. Wait a minute. Hold it, sister. I get it. If it's beauty products you're peddling, I don't need any. Get out. Miss Hannigan, I'm not peddling anything. I'm private secretary to Oliver Warbucks. Oliver Warbucks? The Oliver Warbucks? The Oliver Warbucks. Love the hat. I read one of those columns that Oliver Warbucks is the world's richest unmarried man. I wouldn't know. I don't read, Mr. Winchell. Miss Hannigan, Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays in his home. An orphan? Yes, an orphan. You sure wouldn't rather have a lady? I got two weeks coming. It's a joke. What sort of orphan did you have in mind? Well, she should be friendly. And intelligent. Mississippi, capital M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-
is found. Good afternoon, Drake. Everyone. Miss. Has Mr. Warbucks arrived yet? No, his plane from Chicago arrived at 3.30, so we're expecting him any minute now. Do you really live here? Or is this a train station? We really live here. Oh boy. Mrs. Greer? Yes, miss. Has the carpet been down in the dining room, Mrs. Greer? Yes, miss. And has the Steinway been tuned? Yes, miss. Everything is in order, miss. Mrs. Pugh has prepared his favorite dinner. New England ham chowder. Wonderful. Kentucky fried chicken. Wonderful. Idaho potatoes. And? Baked Alaska. Fine. It will be good to see Mr. Warbucks. Yes. Six weeks is a long time. Yes. Everyone, would you come here for a moment, please? Quickly, everyone. Everyone, quickly. Everyone, this is Annie. She will be with us for the next two weeks for Christmas. Miss. Miss. Annie, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. May I take your coat, Miss? Will I get it back? Of course, dear. <laughs> Gee, I really love my new coat, Miss Farrow. I'm glad, dear. Now, Annie, what do you want to do first? Um, the floors. I'll scrub them. Annie, you won't have to do any cleaning while you're here. I won't? No, of course not. You're our guest. And for the next two weeks, you're going to have a swell time. Now. Cecile will pick out all your clothes. Green is our best color. Yes, sir. 
President Roosevelt. He wants you to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Anyone else? John D. Rockefeller, Mahatma Gandhi, and Harpo Marx. Nothing urgent. What did Harpo want? He didn't say. <laughs> well, let me have another look at that. I think I have to learn to live with this thing. Hang it someplace. Yes, sir. Mr. Warbucks, I'd like to meet the orphan. Oh, and Mrs. Pugh. You may win for your child. Wonderful. Is that your Wonderful. Is that day? Uh, I won't be having dinner tonight. I've got hours of paperwork to get through. Okay, everyone, it's nice to see you all. Drake, dismiss the staff. Yes, sir. And Grace, get your notebook. I'll need you for dictation. Yes, sir. Now we're going to start on the figures from the, on the iron ore shipments from Toledo to. Who is that? This is Annie, sir. She will be with us for the next two weeks. The orphan? Yes. But that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphan, so I chose a girl. Oh. I suppose you have to do. Annie, huh? Annie what? Sir. What's your last name, child? Oh, I'm just Annie, sir. I haven't got a last name, but I know. Your last name, huh? Just Annie. I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. I don't suppose you'd like to be Babe Ruth. Oh, of course, sir. Who's Babe Ruth? I am so delighted that you will be spending Christmas with us. Grace. We're going to start again on those iron ore shipments from Toledo to... What are we supposed to do with this child? It's her first night here, sir. It is? Oh. Well, Annie, your first night here, I suppose we ought to do something special for you. A movie! Would you like to see a movie? Gosh, sure, Miss Norma. I mean, I've heard a lot about them, but I've never been to one. Never? No, sir. Well, then we've got to do something about that right away. And nothing but the best for you. You'll go to the Roxy. Then, then an ice cream soda at Rumpelmeyer's and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Kali! Okay. Grace, you'll be coming along too? Yes, sir. And you know what? Forget about the vacation for tonight. Yes, sir. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, gee. Something the matter, Annie? There's nothing, sir. Ah, uh, gee. No? What is it, child? You don't want to go to the Roxy? No. I want to go. It's just, well, I thought you were going to go. Annie, I've just been on a six-week business trip on an inspection tour of all of my factories, or what's left of my factories with this damn depression. And when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation, then... That's okay. I understand, Mr. Walker. Excuse me, sir. We're not through calling. Good. Hello, Barney. Yes, I got in an hour ago. Detroit and Chicago. I, I didn't like what I saw out there. Factory shut down. My factory shut down. You're damn. You're darn too. When I'm not making money, nobody is. Gosh darn it, Barney, your power Roosevelt has got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with a new plan, a new approach, a new something. Yes, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being too. Yes, I'll talk to you about it. I'm over here tonight. Good. We'll be able to. I, I can show you the. Barney, make it tomorrow. Tonight. Tonight I've got a date to go to the movies with the ten-year-old girl. Eleven. I, I was mistaken. She's eleven. Bye. -bye. Drake. Yes, sir. Get Annie's coat. Yes, sir.
Oh, smell that. Marbles. Well, you got new bus fumes. There's no air like the air of New York. And you don't realize how much you miss it. The whole damn city, until you've been away from it for a while. Like the man says, after New York, every place else is free.
see Ma Perkins. Ma's daughter, Faye, is going to marry Carl Michaels. On Friday, Carl went back to Chicago. Oh, Carl, don't go back to Chicago. But no sooner had Carl left town than Dr. Andrew. Some old geezer out of Yonkers said I swindled him out of 1100 bucks. Yeah? Why do you say that? Because the rooster swindled him out of 1100 bucks. <laughs> ah, Lil. It's true. Sis, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. From, from... Jersey City. Jersey City. Miss Lily St. Regis. I named after the hotel. Which floor? <laughs> Don't you just love Lily, sis? Yeah, I'm nuts about her. Rooster, do me a favor. Any? Get out of here and take the same Regis with you. Aw, oh, come on, sis. Can it? Looking for another handout, huh? Nah, I got 80 bucks coming in the mail Thursday. So all I need is a 10 to tide me over. Uh-uh. Not even a nickel for the subway, Rooster. A fiver, Aggie? Oh, I gotta laugh. You with all your big talk. Gonna be living in clover. This ain't exactly Buckingham Palace. Yeah. I'm on the city. Steady salary, free gas and electric. I'm doing all right. Sis, you're doing like I'm doing. Lousy. <laughs> Aw, oh, Aggie, how'd the two Hannigan kids ever end up like this? On the skits. I remember the way our sainted mother would sit and croon us her lullaby. She'd say, kids, there's a place that's like no other. You gotta get there. You don't get there by playing from the rule book. You stack the aces. You load the dice. Mother dear, oh we know you're down there listening. How can we follow your sweet advice to
Sheehan looked like she had a couple of dollars. She was for all the more bucks. Be all the more bucks? The millionaire? No, the billionaire, you dumb hoe. <laughs> Tell me. She works up in his mansion on Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue? He don't live on Fifth Avenue. He don't. <laughs> Something shady. Where does that put us? Oh, tell her. Give you one guess. Grace, 
call Al Smith and find out what Democrats eat. Yes, sir. Package from Tiffany's? Yes, sir. Right this morning. Fine. I'm going to give this thing to her and then tell her that I want to adopt her. Where is Amy? She's upstairs, writing another letter to your friends at the orphanage. I'll have Drake call her. Fine. Down. Sir, you don't have to be nervous. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. Damn right she is. And I'm not nervous. Get her down here. Drake? Mr. Warbucks will see Annie now. Miss Annie, Mr. Warbucks will see you now. Thank you, Mr. Drake. Hello? Hello, Annie. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you, sir. How are you? I'm fine. 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 Listen, I picked this thing up for you. For me? Gosh, thanks, Mr. Warbucks. You're so nice. Annie, the time has come for the two of us to have a very serious discussion. Sure. You're sending me back to the orphanage, right? Annie, can we have a man-to-man -man talk? Yeah. I was born into a very poor family in what they call Hell's Kitchen, right here in New York. Both my parents died before I was 10. And I made a promise to myself, someday, one way or another, I was going to be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. By the time I was 23, I had made my first million. Then in 10 years, I had turned that into a hundred million. Boy, that was a lot of money in those days. <laughs> anyway, making money is all I've ever given a damn about. And I might as well tell you, Annie, I was ruthless to those I had to climb over to get to the top, because I always believe one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up if you're not coming back down again. But lately, I've realized, no matter how many Rembrandts or Duesenbergs you got, if you don't have anyone to spend your life with, if you're alone, then you might as well be broke and back in Hell's Kitchen. You understand what I'm trying to say? Sure. Good. Kind of. Kind of? I guess not. Damn. I was in Tiffany's yesterday and I picked this thing up for you. Wow. So nice. I had it engraved. Oh, gee. It's a silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old broken one you always wear, and I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Gosh. Thanks, Mr. Corbett. Thank you very much. Here, we'll just take this old no. locket. And... Don't make me take my locket off. I don't want a new one. Annie, what is it? This locket. My mom and dad left it with me when, when they left me at the orphanage. And there was a note, too. They're coming back for me. I know it. And they came with you for Christmas. I know I'm real lucky, but I don't know how to say it. But, but the one thing I want in all the world, more than anything else, is to find my mother and father and to be like other kids with folks of my own. Annie, it'll be all right. I, I'll find your parents for you. Baby. I'll I'll get her a brand baby. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Miss Annie, you just see. If anybody can find your parents, Mr. Warbucks is the man. Mr. Warbucks will find your mother and father. If he has to pull every political string, up to and including the White House. The League of Nations. <laughs>
and I have her. Tomorrow I want Owen J. I want Elliot Ness. We'll just take him off the Capone case. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Mother and father within a couple of days. 